Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. In this quick video, I want to show you how you can navigate back with a result in Android. So very often we have the problem that we need to navigate to another screen, which you can do with this button click here, for example, and then enter some kind of data on that other screen. And when we then click apply, okay, or whatever, we want to take that data from the second screen and transfer it to the first screen. So we enter something here like hello world, and click apply. Then we get back to the previous screen while keeping the text that we entered on the on the second screen. Now I want to show you how you can achieve this type of behavior in Jetpack Compose. But one more thing, I will host a completely free live workshop for all freelancers among you or those who want to become one. And the topic will be how you find the right client as a mobile development freelancer. So I will share all my strategies in that live workshop, how I managed to get to a point where I don't actively need to look for clients anymore because because they all knock on my door. The workshop will be on June 11th at 3 p.m. UTC time. So convert that to your time zone and really make sure to attend because there won't be any recording. So if freelancing is interesting to you, then save your free spot by clicking the first link in this video's description. So I am in an empty Android Studio project. I just added the single uh, navigation dependency here. So we have access to the nav host to be able to implement navigation, of course. But other than that, this is a completely blank project. I want to remove this initial surface code here and instead create our very first nav host. For that, we need the nav controller, which is equal to remember nav controller and we then pass this to a nav host. So on the nav host, we just define all of our different screens and destinations we have in our app. So let's take this and pass our nav controller and also the, uh, the graph, we want to pass an initial start destination, which in this case, let's just call it screen one for simplicity. Also we factor or yeah, rearrange this a little bit. And in here in the nav host, we now define the different screens we have on the one hand, that is a composable called screen one, which is our initial screen. On the other hand, we have our screen two, where we navigate to. So also open this block here. Let's quickly implement our little UI we have here. So for screen one, this is just a column. The modifier is modifier fill max size. And in this column, we just have our text composal, but we only want to show that if we get a result from the second screen. So let's ignore that for now because we don't have that yet, but rather start with our button. When we click that, we want to get to our second screen. So we say nav controller that navigate and we want to get to screen two and the text of our button will be something like go to screen two. On our second screen, screen number two, we also want to have a column modifier fill max size, but here we want to have an outline text field. So just a text field where we can enter some text. The value of this will need to be some form of state, which we can define here. So var text by remember, just use this overload here, for example, we don't need a key. And in here we say we have a mutable state of an empty string by default. Let's hit alt enter on remember. And for some reason it doesn't recognize um, this to, to import it. Let's scroll up and go to imports, duplicate this composer runtime import if you also have this problem and replace this with set value and get value. And then we will also have the import for that. I don't know why Inner Studio has this bucket that it doesn't suggest to auto import that, but now it works and is recognized. Okay, so for this outline text field, we will pass our text state. And when the value changes, when the text changes, we just update this text with it. So with the new text, and I want to give this text field a width of 300 dp. So we have some space to enter something. It gives us an error here because um, we need this experimental annotation. Let's add this to on create. And then let's simply add a button below. When we click this, we now want to get back to the previous screen. Let's call this apply. So how do we now get back to the previous screen and take this result? So the text here, whatever we entered in the text field to the previous screen, so we can show it there. First of all, if we are on a screen and we want to get back to the previous screen, we usually want to do that by just popping uh, the current screen from the back stack. So we say navcontroller.pop back stack. But right now we still don't have the result from, uh, from the second screen on the first screen. To achieve that, we can use the nav controller 
and refer to the previous backstack entry. So if we are on screen two, then screen two is the current backstack entry. And the previous backstack entry is just, yeah, the previous screen in this case, so screen one. And we can refer to this backstack entry and pass some values to its saved state handle. So we can say question mark dot saved state handle, which is just uh, yeah kind of a class that holds some data, which will be also restored after a screen rotation, after process death. And this is also what Android or the navigation framework actually uses to pass data from one screen to another screen. So all that really happens if you have a navigation argument is that value will be passed inside of this safe state handle. The safe state handle will be passed to the next uh, screen and then it will be retrieved there. And we will now make use of the exact same mechanism just that we refer to the previous safe state handle. So we can say dot set to set a certain value the key of that is, let's say, my text doesn't really matter as long as you um, use a unique key and you use the same key to access it on the first screen. And the value is, uh, then simply is our text. And if we then scroll up to our screen one, you can see here we get access to the nav backstack entry. So this is the backstack entry of screen one, which now has the saved state handle, which we manipulated from screen two. So if we go here and we say we want to get our text, then we can say that's equal to entry dot saved state handle dot get and we want to get a string here and the key of that string is simply my text again and if that text exists so if there is a string we passed we can check that here dot let then we want to show our additional text here that just shows our text and it's really that easy. So if we now launch this on our emulator take a look here there's of course still the old app that I showed you before. There we go, my app launched. We can click on go to screen two. Here we can enter something like hello everyone. Click apply, we get back and we see our string hello everyone. If we do that again, we can of course also use different things. Hello world, click apply and then we see hello world. So we just override it, uh, this value. So thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new and I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.